Hi everyone, welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today we're going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this Gigabyte motherboard. The Z68 chipset from Intel has arrived and this is the Z68 UD4 B3 motherboard from Gigabyte featuring the LGA1155 socket which supports Intel Core i3, i5, and i7 processors. So let's start off by going over some of the features listed on the box here. This is the Z68X UD4, I, I should say. It. There is an X right there. Uh, but let's uh, point out the big logos first. This features an hybrid EFI touch BIOS, uh, which means it is mouse and keyboard enabled, so you can actually point and click within the BIOS. Uh, very nice to have that. EFI BIOS also, by default, will support booting from uh, hard drives that are 3 terabytes or larger. Uh, which is something that the old school BIOS is not capable of. You do get a three year warranty from Gigabyte if you purchase this motherboard in the USA or Canada. And this uh, motherboard also features Gigabyte's double copper PCB, uh, which means they've used twice the amount of copper that you normally get with a motherboard, which improves uh, both the quality of the board as well as the durability. Uh, next up here we have NVIDIA SLI Ready as well as ATI Crossfire X Ready. This features 16 phase power design in the VRM area to supply power to your CPU. Uh, the caps uh, as well as the MOSFETs and the chokes are all hi high quality parts uh, which will last longer for the life of the board. Uh, this does have quite a few uh, USB 2.0 ports that feature triple power uh, that helps you both uh, have compatibility with your USB devices as well as to charge them more quickly. Uh, we do have USB 3.0 support as well as SATA revision 3.06 gigabit per second. Finally, down here in the bottom right, uh, this motherboard does support Intel's smart response technology. And uh, just to give a quick idea of what that is, uh, here's a mechanical hard drive and an SSD. Smart response technology will allow you to pair a smaller sized SSD, 64 gigs or less, with a mechanical hard drive. What it does is it caches frequently used data that, from the mechanical hard drive to the SSD. It recognizes both drives as a single drive, but you get much, much improved performance when it's accessing data that's cached to the SSD. And if you're interested, uh, I would recommend doing some searching around the internet for Intel Smart Response Technology because I'm sure there's going to be lots of benchmarks and other information forthcoming on that. Of course, uh, Intel Generation 2 core processors, C68 chipset. Uh, we have a 108 decibel signal to noise ratio uh, sound card, and that's specifically for playing back Blu rays, uh, high definition audio. Uh, Dolby Home Theater sound, uh, as previously mentioned, the 3 terabyte. Uh, boot capability. Also, it does have dual BIOS, so you can switch back and forth between two BIOSes, which gives you a lot more confidence when doing tweaks and stuff to your BIOS settings, because you can switch back to a default BIOS if anything gets uh, messed up. There is some additional information on the back, but that's mainly information that I already went over on the front. So let's go ahead and get the motherboard out of the box so we can take a closer look at the accessories. This is the first bit of information uh, in the box, and that is basically saying do not attempt to install a socket 1156 processor into this. This only supports generation 2 core processors, socket 1155, so make sure you have an 1155 processor. It is not backwards compatible. Also, if you're purchasing a Z68 motherboard, I would also recommend getting a K series processor, uh, which are the unlocked ones, because if you're buying Z68, it's really a waste not to be able to overclock. Here is your installation guide user's manual. It is black and white, but it does have all of the uh, goodies and information in there about installation. Make sure to keep this on hand while you're uh, doing your system build because there's important stuff in there. Uh, next up is our installation driver CD. Uh, it's always best to check Gigabyte's website to see if they have updated versions of drivers rather than using the disk, but it's always good to have on hand. Uh, next up is uh, simply another installation manual. This one's multilingual. Uh, multilingual, of course. Uh, let's move on to these actual real hardware accessories. First off, we have our input-output shield. The inputs and outputs are color-coded. Specifically, all the red labeled ones you see there are the triple power USB 2.0 ports. We have a couple bags of cables. There are four serial, serial ATA cables in total that they've included, and two of those feature L brackets on one end. Finally, we have a, a dual link SLI cable, so you can use that to connect two video cards, NVIDIA-based video cards together for an SLI configuration. If you're wondering why Crossfire cables aren't included with motherboards, well, those usually come with the video cards. And here we have the motherboard itself. 
All right, guys, there is a full look at the UD4 in all of its glory. You can see they've got a nice matte black PCB. Uh, all of your connectors uh, for PCI and your DIMM slots are all black. Uh, they've got some nice gunmetal gray. This is uh, some anodized, it looks like anodized aluminum heat sinks. Uh, low profile one for the Z68 chipset right here, and then uh, some uh, heat pipe design versions up here over the VRM modules. Uh, so I'm going to start down here at the bottom, just go over all the connectors on the board that are of note and uh, give you guys a better idea of the layout of this board overall. So starting down here in the bottom right corner, we have our front panel connectors. Those do have some color coding inside to help you uh, set up your front panel plugs from your case and plug those all in. This is a TPM header, which most people will not use. Next to that is a USB 3.0 uh, front panel connector, so you can route that to uh, your case if it has a USB 3.0 front panel header, or you can buy a USB 3.0 add-on module if you want to mount some USB 3.0 ports to the front of your case. Next to that we have one, two, three USB 2.0 front panel ports, uh, so you can connect your USB 2.0 front ports. Next to that is a COM port. We also have a Firewire 1394 port right underneath that little switch, or cover I should say. Uh, and then finally we have our HD audio connector so you can connect your front panel mic and headphones. Uh, right above that is our uh, sound card area where you can see all the uh, the caps and the chip for the uh, integrated sound card. Again that features 108 decibel signal to noise ratio full rate lossless audio for uh, Blu-ray and DVD audio playback. Moving back over to this side of the board uh, we actually have a four pin PWM controlled uh, system fan header. Above that are our uh, serial ATA ports. There are eight total right here. Um, these six are controlled by the Z68 chipset. The black ones are serial ATA revision 2, 3 gigabits per second. Uh, the white one here, also controlled by Z68, is serial ATA revision 3, 6 gigabit per second. And then finally, these gray ones here, also SATA revision 3, 6 gigabit per second, controlled by a Marvell 88SE9172 chip. There are actually two of these Marvell controller chips on the board, and I'm going to get a bit out of sync here, but just to keep this all together. Uh, on the back panel here, you actually have two eSATA ports. One of these has USB power uh, connected, so it's a powered eSATA bracket, and right here is a standard eSATA port, but those are both SATA Revision 3 compatible, and those are uh, powered by another Marvell chip. So let's get back on track here. Uh, right next to that you can see our low profile Z68 heat sink. It's a passive heat sink, uh, which is very nice because they make no noise. Uh, also low profile, so if you have uh, some longer video cards going over that, they are not going to interfere. Speaking of longer video cards, we do have two 16-speed PCI Express slots. Uh, this is SLI and Crossfire compatible, Crossfire compatible. If you are using both of these slots, then one will default to 8-speed. In between that, we have two single-speed PCI Express slots, and then finally down here at the bottom, we have two legacy standard PCI slots for all of your legacy PCI devices. All right, moving up to the upper area of the board. Over here on the right side, we have our 24-pin uh, power supply connector, so that's where your main power to the motherboard goes. Above that, we have another chassis fan connector. That's a 3-pin. Above that, we have our, or next to that, I should say, we have our DIMM slots. These are four DIMM slots which support DDR3 memory. They are 1.5 volt slots, and you can have up to 32 gigs of system memory installed in that. Supports uh, overclock memory up to 2,133 megahertz. Next to that is our CPU fan header. That's PDM, PWM controlled four pin header, and that will route over to your uh, heatsink fan for your CPU. Here's your LGA 1155 socket. Uh, there's a little plastic cover. Make sure you always keep that little plastic cover because if you ever need to return the, bo return the board, you need to include that. Also, once you remove this cover, be very, very careful because those pins inside are really delicate. Next to that, we have our VRM area for the CPU power. This is a 16-phase power design. Uh, also, it features dual CPU power. And then we have, again, some anodized gray heat sinks uh, with a heat pipe going between them to make sure that those VRMs are stay nice and cool, uh, especially if you're overclocking your CPU. Finally, up here on the top left, we have a system fan header. header. That's a three pin. And then next to that is a uh, eight pin EPS power. Uh, so you can have supplemental power for the CPU. Make sure you're uh, using that eight pin EPS power, especially if you're going to overclock the CPU. You can use four pin ATX if your uh, power supply doesn't have the eight pin. But if you're overclocking, it's always best to plug in the eight pin there. Finally, I know we already showed you this once, but we didn't go over all the ports. Here are your input outputs on the back of the board. 
All of these red USB ports that you see here are the triple power USB 2.0 ports. Uh, so make sure you're using those if you're charging devices or using any sort of external hard drive or something that requires additional USB power. Uh, below that we have our standard PS2 port for mouse or keyboard. Uh, next to these are a couple audio connectors. We have a coax audio and we also have a Toslink and that is SPDIF compatible. Uh, next set, this yellow port here is Firewire. Below that we have uh, another USB 2.0 port. These are the eSATA ports that I already mentioned. Those are 6 gigabit per second eSATA ports. One is powered, one is not. A couple more uh, red USB 2.0s. Here are a couple USB 3.0 ports. Um, finally, we have our gigabit LAN connector right there, uh, which is a Realtek RTL8111E chip, and that is gigabit LAN. And then finally, all of our inputs and outputs for our audio, uh, which features 7.1 channel Dolby Home Theater audio output. Before we close, here's a quick look at the bottom of the board so you guys can get another look at that nice matte black finish. Uh, right here you can see where the Z68 chipset is mounted. They've used spring-loaded uh, Phillips head screws, so if you do go with water cooling, you can easily remove that so you can get a water block onto that chipset. And finally up here, we have a couple push pin uh, mounts for our CPU phase coolers. And that pretty much wraps it up for our unboxing and overview. This has been the Gigabyte Z68X UD4B3 featuring the LG A1155 socket, supports Intel Core i3, i5, and i7 processors. If you want to overclock, get the case KSKU processors. So like 2500K, 2600K, and so on. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. Thanks a lot for watching today's video, and we'll see you next time.